As the vast shadow of the Gorgolian flagship blotted out the stars, Admiral Threx surveyed Earth from his command deck, surrounded by his lieutenants. His voice boomed across the silent chamber. Prepare to launch the invasion pods. This world will kneel before the Gorgolian Empire by day's end. Lieutenant Gorzak, his trusted second-in-command, approached with a cautious tone. Admiral, our scans still show no signs of military mobilization on their surface. It's unusual for a species with their capabilities to not respond to our presence. Threx scoffed. They are primitive, Gorzak. They know they cannot match our might. Proceed with the invasion. As the first wave of pods streaked through the atmosphere, the command room buzzed with anticipation. However, what the screens showed upon landing was completely unexpected. Sprawling cities devoid of life, vehicles abandoned mid-transit, homes with doors ajar as if left in a hurry. Report, Threx demanded, his eyes narrowing at the main display. Commander Rylak, in charge of ground operations, responded via comlink. Admiral, the cities are empty. It's as if the humans knew we were coming and vanished. Threx pounded his fist on the console. Impossible! Deploy the drones. I want a full sweep of the area. Find me these humans. On Earth, inside a dusty, long-abandoned office building, Jack Harper and his team watched the alien descent. The room was rigged with monitors, makeshift tech illuminating their determined faces. Jack turned to his colleague, Tom, a burly man with a knack for electronics. You sure our cloaking devices are holding up? Tom nodded, his eyes fixed on a screen displaying drone activity. Yeah, the quantum dispersers are working. To them, it looks like we left in a hurry. This should buy us some time to activate phase two. Good. Mike, Eva, status report? Jack asked, glancing at two other members of his team hunched over various instruments. Eva, the strategist, pointed at the map on her screen. All civilian transports to the quantum safe zones are accounted for. We've got 98% of the population secure. The rest are in non-detect zones, too small for their scans to pinpoint. Mike, a young engineer with a calm demeanor, chimed in. And the energy signatures from their ships are just as we predicted. We can start the EMP sequence any time now. Jack rubbed his chin thoughtfully. No, hold off on that. If they think the planet's dead, they might just leave. Keep monitoring their communications. Any sign they're on to us, then we hit them hard. Back in orbit, Threx grew increasingly frustrated. Gorzak, bring me the scientist. Perhaps he knows why this planet appears abandoned. A human, bound and under heavy guard, was brought forth. He was Dr. Henry Larson, a physicist who had been caught off guard by the rapid onset of the invasion while trying to reach a safe zone. Threx glared at him. Human, explain this trickery. Where have your people gone? Henry, his face stoic despite his fear, met Threx's gaze. We're right here. You just can't see us. Is this some sort of human jest? Threx sneered, motioning to his guards. No jest, Admiral. Just quantum mechanics at play. You didn't think we'd just wait around for you to wipe us out, did you? Threx's eyes widened with the realization that the humans had outmaneuvered him somehow, using technology he hadn't anticipated. Secure him. He might prove useful. As Threx turned to consult with his officers across the dimensional divide, Jack and his team prepared for the long resistance ahead, ready to defend their hidden sanctuaries against the alien threat that now hunted them in their own vanished world. Inside the dimly lit command center, buried deep under what was once the bustling city of Denver, Jack Harper paced before a large digital map displaying the global status. Every few seconds, a red dot would blink out, a sign that another group of survivors had successfully made it to a quantum safe zone. Tom glanced up from his workstation, breaking the silence. Jack, we're almost there. The last of the groups are entering the final phase of displacement. Jack nodded, his mind racing with plans and contingencies. Good. Keep monitoring any alien communications. Anything they might figure out could expose us. Across the room, Eva was liaising with safe zone coordinators via secure channels. All zones are reporting green statuses, Jack. Our quantum veil is holding strong, but we can't predict for how long. Jack approached her station, his expression stern yet hopeful. It's working for now, and that's what matters. Our advantage lies in staying hidden and misdirecting them. Let's keep it that way. The tension was palpable as Mike interjected. There's something else you need to see, Jack. He motioned for the group to gather around a smaller screen, which displayed intercepted alien transmissions. They're confused, but getting more aggressive in their tactics. 
Looks like they're not leaving anytime soon, Mike reported, analyzing the patterns of the transmissions. Jack rubbed his temples, the weight of leadership heavy on his shoulders. We need to stay one step ahead. Tom, how's the secondary protocol coming along? Tom, fiddling with a mass of wires and circuits, didn't look up. The EMP tech is almost ready. We can launch a blackout to their flagship if they make a move towards any of the safe zones. Jack's gaze then shifted to a framed photo on the wall, a younger version of himself with Dr. Charles Bennett, the pioneer behind quantum displacement theory. His mentor's teachings were now the backbone of humanity's survival strategy. Charlie always said, invent the future you desire. That's exactly what we're doing here. Suddenly, a sharp beep sounded. Eva pointed at a blinking light on her console. We've got a problem. One of our safe zones near the Rockies is showing fluctuations. It looks like a cloaking failure. The room tensed up as Jack quickly assessed the situation. Mike, Eva, get a tech team on this now. Use the tunnels. And Tom, get the EMP ready, just in case. Outside the safety of their hidden command center, the world seemed to hold its breath. The Gorgolians, with their advanced technology and formidable presence, continued their search, unaware of the invisible web of resistance weaving around them. Back on the Gorgolian flagship, Admiral Threx was losing patience. He stared down at Dr. Larson, who had so far revealed little. Your quantum tricks won't protect you forever, human. We will find your hiding places. Henry, though scared, managed a defiant smile. You might find some, but not all. And certainly not in time. The scene closed with Threx turning away, a mix of anger and respect forming within him. Humans, he realized, were not the simple, primitive foes he had expected. They were cunning, resourceful, and most importantly, determined to survive. Back on the Gorgolian flagship orbiting Earth, Admiral Threx paced restlessly in his strategy room. The mysterious disappearance of the humans not only puzzled him, but also challenged the pride of the Gorgolian Empire. His officers stood in tense silence, aware of the rising stakes. Admiral, we've conducted sweeps of all major metropolitan areas, began Commander Zylock, his voice steady despite the uncertainty. There's no trace. It's as if they've evaporated. Threx stopped, turning sharply to face his subordinate. Evaporated, Commander, or hidden. This scientist, he gestured dismissively towards Dr. Larson, who sat bound to a chair under heavy guard, mentioned quantum mechanics. What do we know about it? A younger officer, a specialist in alien technologies, stepped forward. Sir, quantum mechanics involves the manipulation of particles at the smallest scales. If the humans have mastered it to this extent, they could theoretically hide themselves from us, even while remaining on Earth. Threx's eyes narrowed. So they are here, but not here. Is that it? Yes, Admiral. They could be parallel to us, in another layer of reality. Our standard sensors wouldn't detect them. Threx considered this, his mind racing. Prepare the quantum displacement module. If they are hiding in another layer, we will simply have to go in after them. Meanwhile, in the underground command center, Jack and his team were scrambling to address the cloaking failure in one of their safe zones. Jack spoke into his communicator with calm urgency. Eva, status on that patch? Eva responded from her console, sweat on her brow. Working on it, Jack. We should have the cloak stabilized shortly, but this is a temporary fix. We need a more permanent solution to these fluctuations. Jack turned to Mike. Keep an eye on those alien transmissions. Any hint they're on to us, and we need to be ready to move everyone to secondary locations. Understood, Jack, Mike replied, his fingers dancing over his keyboard as he monitored incoming data streams. On the Gorgolian flagship, the preparation for dimensional travel was underway. The quantum displacement module, a towering structure filled with pulsing energy and intricate machinery, hummed with power. Threx watched, his determination turning into a grim anticipation. Begin the sequence, Threx commanded, his voice echoing through the chamber. The machine whirred to life, its core glowing with an intense light. The air shimmered as if reality itself was warping. Threx, along with a select team, stepped into the device their forms blurring and then disappearing as they transitioned into the quantum rift. The world they emerged into was vastly different. Skies were a surreal shade of violet, and the landscape was dotted with bizarre, twisted versions of Earth's flora. Threx and his team looked around in awe and confusion. This is Earth? Zylok questioned, looking around the alien landscape. Or an echo of it, Threx replied. Spread out and secure the perimeter. We are not alone here. Back on the real Earth, Jack received an urgent update from Tom. Jack, 
There's a massive energy spike from the alien flagship. It's unlike anything we've seen before. I think they're trying something new. Jack's expression hardened. They're not giving up. Neither will we. Let's make sure our quantum veils hold. Humanity must stay hidden no matter what comes through that rift. As Admiral Threx and his elite Gorgolian team adjusted to the disorienting effects of their quantum leap, they set up a temporary base on this eerily mirrored version of Earth. The landscape, while resembling their target, pulsed with an unnatural energy, colors and sounds just a shade off from what they were used to. Secure the area, Threx commanded, his eyes scanning the horizon. I want every piece of tech we have scanning for human activity. They're here somewhere, and we will find them. Lieutenant Gorzak set up the portable scanning units, tuning them to detect any quantum disturbances that might indicate human presence. Scanners are live, Admiral. If anything moves in this dimension that's out of the ordinary, we'll know. Meanwhile, back in their hidden command center on Earth, Jack Harper and his team were closely monitoring the unusual energy fluctuations detected near the Gorgolian flagship's last known coordinates. Mike, can you get a read on what happened up there? Jack asked, peering over the young engineer's shoulder at the stream of data pouring in. Mike adjusted his glasses, his focus intense. It's like they've opened a door to somewhere else. The energy signatures don't match anything we've encountered. I think they've managed to access another dimension, possibly parallel to ours. Jack's jaw tightened. If they find a way to bypass our quantum veils through another dimension, we need to be ready. Tom, Eva, brainstorm some countermeasures. We can't let them use this to their advantage. In the alternate dimension, Threx and his team ventured out from their base, weapons and sensors at the ready. The environment seemed peaceful, yet every soldier felt the weight of countless unseen eyes upon them. Admiral, we're picking up something, Gorzak announced, gesturing to his handheld device which was pinging rhythmically. It's weak, but definitely artificial. Could be a human tech signature. Lead the way, Threx ordered, following Gorzak as the signal grew stronger. The source led them to a small, concealed facility, cleverly camouflaged to blend into the surrounding terrain. Threx signaled his squad to surround the building. On my mark, he whispered, ready to confront whatever or whoever was inside. Back on Earth, Jack's team was working feverishly. Eva came up with a plan. We can't stop them from exploring that dimension, but we can make sure they don't find anything useful. What if we set up quantum decoys? Simulated energy spikes scattered around, just noise, but it might lead them on a wild goose chase. Jack nodded in approval. Do it, and keep monitoring their movements. Any pattern or strategy they adopt, I want to know about it. In the alternate dimension, Threx's team breached the facility only to find it empty, save for several high-tech devices humming quietly, decoys, as Ava had proposed. Frustrated, Threx realized they had been led astray. Another dead end muttered Gorzak, scanning the empty room. Threx slammed his fist against the wall. Keep searching. They can't hide forever. Not here, not in their own world, and certainly not in this one. As the Gorgolian forces regrouped and continued their search, Jack and his team watched their futile efforts from afar, their determination hardened. Every move the Gorgolians made, every strategy they tried, was anticipated and countered. This isn't just about survival anymore, Jack said to his team, a fierce glint in his eyes. It's about protecting our future, in every dimension it might exist. In the alternate dimension, Admiral Threx's frustration mounted as his team's efforts to locate the humans turned up nothing but cleverly crafted decoys. The landscape, though resembling Earth, was strangely deserted, playing tricks on their senses and making their mission all the more maddening. Admiral, the latest scans still show no substantial human presence, reported Commander Zylock, the data from his device casting a pale glow on his determined face. It seems they are either extremely well hidden or... Or what, Commander? Speak, Threx demanded, his patience wearing thin. Or they are aware of our presence and are avoiding direct engagement, Zylok concluded, wary of his leader's growing ire. Threx paced before the holographic map, his mind racing. If they know we're here, they'll be preparing their defenses. We need to change our tactics. Initiate guerrilla warfare protocols. Hit and run. Sabotage. Spread out and keep them guessing. Meanwhile, back in the primary dimension, Jack Harper was orchestrating a similar strategy. His team had not only noticed the Gorgolians' movement into the alternate dimension, but had also prepared for indirect engagements. Listen up, Jack addressed his core team in the underground bunker. The Gorgolians are getting desperate. We've confirmed they're using guerrilla tactics in the other dimension. We'll use their own strategy against them. 
Tom, checking his monitors, chimed in. I've set up multiple quantum echoes throughout their path. Each one mimics human technological activity. It'll be like chasing shadows. Jack nodded. Perfect. Eva, Mike, how are the preparations for our counter-strikes? Eva was coordinating with field teams remotely. We have squads ready to deploy on your command. The moment they engage one of Tom's echoes, we strike at their exposed flanks. In the alternate dimension, Thrax led a small, elite squad through the underbrush, following the latest signal they had picked up. The environment was quiet, too quiet, which only heightened their tension. Suddenly the ground beneath two of his soldiers collapsed, sending them tumbling into a hidden pit. It was an old human trap, repurposed with alien technology. Ambush! shouted Threx, just as a series of explosions rocked the area around them. In the chaos, holographic images of human soldiers appeared all around, firing and moving with lifelike precision. The Gorgolians fired back, but their targets flickered and vanished, revealing them to be mere projections. Retreat! Regroup! Threx ordered, pulling his remaining men back. They retreated under the cover of return fire from their support team, narrowly escaping a well-coordinated human trap. Back on Earth, Jack received the field report with a grim satisfaction. Good. Every time they fall for a decoy, it drains their resources and morale. Keep up the pressure. His team was invigorated by the small victories, but Jack knew this was only the beginning. We need to stay vigilant. They won't fall for the same tricks forever. We'll need to innovate continuously. Eva nodded in agreement her eyes scanning the latest satellite images. I'll coordinate with the tech teams. We'll prepare a few new surprises for our visitors. The chapter closed with Threx and his team licking their wounds, regrouping in their makeshift base. The Admiral stared at the map, his mind working overtime to decipher the human's next move. They are more resourceful than we anticipated, he confessed to Zylok, his voice low. But so are we. This is not just a battle of firepower. It's a battle of wits. And so, with both sides deeply entrenched in their tactics of deception and counter-deception, the interdimensional game of cat and mouse continued, each side waiting for the other to make a decisive mistake. As the interdimensional warfare intensified, Admiral Threx grew increasingly obsessed with capturing Jack Harper, convinced that he was the linchpin in the human resistance. The Admiral's fixation drove him to authorize increasingly risky operations in both dimensions, stretching his forces thin. Admiral, we need to consider the possibility that this continued focus on Harper might be exactly what the humans want, cautioned Commander Zylock, his concern evident. We're allocating a lot of resources with little return. Threx turned sharply, his eyes burning with a fierce determination. Harper is the key, Zylock. He orchestrates their defenses, designs their traps. Without him, their resistance will crumble. We continue as planned. Meanwhile, Jack Harper, aware of his importance to the Gorgolian strategies, Use this to his advantage. In the underground bunker, he met with his closest advisors to plan their next moves. Threx is becoming predictable. His obsession with capturing me has made him reckless, Jack explained to his team. We can use this. Let's prepare a series of operations that exploit their split focus. Tom nodded, pulling up a digital map. I've identified several weak points in their surveillance network. We could stage mock operations to draw them out and then hit them where they're not expecting. Eva added, we have new intel on their communication protocols. We might be able to send them on a wild goose chase deep into the alternate dimension, away from our critical operations. In the alternate dimension, Threx led a special task force towards a location they believed to be Jack Harper's last known coordinates. The landscape was riddled with anomalies, making navigation treacherous and their technology unreliable. As they advanced, the ground team encountered what appeared to be a small human outpost. Threx ordered his troops to surround it, ready for a direct assault. This could be it. Prepare to capture anyone inside, alive if possible, he commanded. However, as the Gorgolians breached the perimeter, they found the outpost deserted, with signs of hasty abandonment. It was another decoy, equipped with recorded human activity and heat signatures to fool their sensors. Another diversion, growled Threx, slamming his fist against a wall. Harper is mocking us. Back on Earth, Jack monitored the operation's progress a slight smile playing on his lips. They took the bait. Execute phase two, he instructed his team. Mike activated a series of pre-planted explosives, collapsing the routes the Gorgolians had used to enter the outpost, cutting off their immediate retreat and sowing confusion among their ranks. In the chaos, Jack's guerrilla teams launched a coordinated attack, striking from concealed positions. The Gorgolians, 
caught off guard and disoriented, suffered heavy casualties before managing to retreat back to their dimension, their mission a failure. After the skirmish, Threx regrouped with his commanders, his expression grim. We underestimated them again. Adjust our tactics. Harper is clever, but he is not invincible. We need to think like him. Meanwhile, Jack met with his resistance leaders, reinforcing the need for vigilance and continuous innovation in their tactics. Today was a victory, but it's just one battle. Threx won't stop, and neither will we. Stay sharp and keep evolving our strategies. The chapter closed with both sides licking their wounds, regrouping and reassessing, their resolve hardened. The hunt for Harper had become more than just a military objective. It was a personal crusade for Threx, and for Jack, it was a rallying cry to keep his people safe and free. As the interdimensional war dragged on, Admiral Threx's forces found themselves caught in a grueling cycle of attrition. Each strike against the elusive human targets drained more of their resources and morale. Back on the Gorgolian flagship, Threx faced growing dissent among his ranks. Admiral, we need to reconsider our strategy, Commander Zylock urged, standing firm despite Threx's intimidating presence. Continuing this way will only lead to more losses without significant gains. Threx, his features set in a stern mask, replied coldly, I will hear no talk of retreat. We are Gorgolians, we do not falter. Prepare for another assault. However, the murmurs of discontent grew louder, fueled by the latest failed mission, which had been a devastating ambush orchestrated by Harper's forces. Many soldiers were questioning the wisdom of their relentless pursuit, and their confidence in Threx's leadership waned. On Earth, Jack Harper and his team capitalized on this momentum. The Gorgolians are stretched thin, it's time to push harder, Jack declared during a strategy meeting. The walls of their underground base were lined with screens, displaying maps and live feeds of enemy positions. Eva chimed in with a tactical update. We've identified a critical vulnerability in their communication network. A well-placed strike could sever their command structure and isolate their units in the field, Tom added, and I've rigged a series of quantum mines. If they try another incursion, they'll find a nasty surprise waiting for them. In the alternate dimension, Threx launched a desperate offensive, hoping to capture key resistance leaders and finally break the human spirit. His troops, weary yet obedient, followed him into what would become a pivotal confrontation. As the Gorgolians advanced, Jack's plan swung into action. The quantum mines detonated brilliantly, creating chaotic energy fields that disrupted the alien tech. Human forces, hidden and ready, launched their assault, taking advantage of the confusion. Threx, in the midst of battle, realized too late the extent of the trap. His forces, cut off from each other by the energy fields, struggled to regroup. To me! Rally to me! he shouted. But his voice was lost amidst the tumult. Back at the human command center, Mike monitored the engagement with intense focus. The mines worked. Their main group is fragmented. Our teams are moving in now. Jack watched the battle unfold, his expression a mix of resolve and weariness. Keep pressing. This could be the turning point we've been waiting for. The battle raged fiercely, with human guerrilla tactics proving superior in the chaotic environment. Threx, surrounded and overwhelmed, was captured by human soldiers, his defeat marking a significant turning point in the war. With their leader taken and their morale shattered, the Gorgolian forces withdrew, their invasion efforts crumbling. The news of Threx's capture spread quickly, igniting hope among human forces and seeding doubt among the remaining Gorgolian commanders. In the aftermath, Jack addressed his weary but victorious team. This victory was crucial, but it's not the end. We need to secure our defenses and prepare for what comes next. They'll be back, but we'll be ready. The chapter closed with Threx, now a prisoner, contemplating the turn of events. The humans had not only survived, but had outsmarted and outmaneuvered his forces at every step. As he faced Jack across an interrogation table, the harsh reality settled in. Underestimating the humans had been his gravest error. In the aftermath of their victory, the Resistance's command center was abuzz with activity and cautious optimism. Jack Harper sat in his makeshift office, planning the next steps for Earth's recovery and the fortification of their defenses. His team, ever vigilant, monitored the departure of the Gorgolian ships from their stations. Jack's communicator beeped, a signal from his lookout posts. Harper here, go ahead. Sir. The last of the Gorgolian fleet has cleared the exosphere and is setting course back to their quadrant. Surveillance confirms no signs of regrouping, reported a voice, crisp and formal. 
Jack leaned back in his chair, allowing himself a moment of relief. Thank you. Keep monitoring their trajectory. I want updates every hour. Turning off the communicator, Jack then convened a meeting with his key advisors, including Tom, Eva, and Mike, to discuss the future. As much as this victory is a relief, we need to be prepared for other potential threats, Jack started, his gaze serious. Eva, what's the status on our quantum network? Eva adjusted her glasses, her voice steady. It's stable for now, but this conflict has taught us the importance of being prepared. I propose we expand the network, improve its capabilities for both defense and civilian use. Tom chimed in. I agree. And we should also look into reverse engineering some of the Gorgolian technology we've captured. It could bolster our defenses and maybe even our infrastructure. Jack nodded in agreement. Make it happen. And Mike, set up a task force to assess any environmental impact from the conflict. We need to mitigate any damage done to our planet. The group agreed, each member ready to take on the tasks ahead. The meeting adjourned with a sense of shared purpose, but as they left, Jack stayed behind, deep in thought. He later walked through the corridors of the underground base, observing the relief and joy on people's faces. They were safe for now, but Jack knew that true peace would require vigilance and preparation. Outside, Earth was slowly beginning to heal. Cities were being rebuilt, families reunited, and communities restored. Humanity had faced extinction and emerged victorious, not just surviving but affirming their place in the universe. Jack stood at a viewpoint overlooking the recovering cityscape as the sun set, casting a golden glow over the land. The sight of peace was a stark contrast to the recent memories of war. He thought of all those who had been lost and those who had fought bravely. This peace was their legacy, a testament to their courage and determination. Jack Harper, a man who had led humanity through its darkest hours, looking towards a horizon now bright with promise. Under his leadership, Earth would not seek revenge, but rather a chance to build a future where such a conflict would never happen again. As the stars twinkled above, Earth remained vigilant, a sentinel in the vast, silent universe, forever watchful, forever enduring.